Okay guys, here it comes. This is what we're gonna make today and it's gonna take us a little while, so um, be patient with me as I try to figure my way through this. But see, there's lots of other cute ones in there. So I do wanna give you the link so you have other choices. Um, some of the things that she's gonna, she asks us to do um, are a little advanced. Like there, she's gonna ask us to do a standing double crochet. I've had never taught you that before, so I'm gonna teach you it on the fly. Um, she also, teaches us or she also asks us to do a popcorn stitch which she doesn't tell you how to do that so I'm going to teach you how to do that on the fly as well so bear with me we're going to start off with a magic ring and she wants us to chain one it's not going to count as a single crochet as I told you before in the magic rings so you're going to do eight single crochets around the ring and then you're going to join it so we'll do that really quickly if you remember um, a magic ring is just like doing a slip knot except for instead of doing pulling it tight, you're just gonna pull it up like this. And you're gonna do a chain, that's just to lock it in so it doesn't move around on you. Here, let me move the yarn. And we'll move that over. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna do eight single crochets into the ring. So don't pull the ring yet, just go one, two, Three, four, it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, okay, and then you're gonna pull it tight. Just like that. Magic in the magic ring. And then you're going to single crochet into the, or sorry, you're gonna slip stitch into the single crochet. And then I make sure that we have eight. So sometimes it's a little different the way people tell you to do that. We wanna end with eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this one is not gonna count. Um, so when we do our next stitch, we're not gonna count this one. We're gonna go right into that one. So one chain up. And now we're gonna do two single crochets into each one of these stitches, which is effectively going to just double the size of our circle. Okay, so let's double check and see where we're at. I think we have one more to go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. The goal is sixteen. So we're gonna do one, two, and then we're gonna join into the top of the single crochet, not the chain. And that's it for the yellow round, for this yellow round. So we're gonna go ahead and finish it and we're gonna weave it in. Make sure this one's nice and tight. And that's where we're at so far. My ends are woven in. Time for the next round. We're gonna go right into the fun stuff here. I believe we start well, we'll find out. I believe we start with the white. Okay, so what she wants us to do is she wants us to start off with a standing double crochet. This is kind of advanced, so um, feel good about yourself when you get this done. I think it's kind of advanced. So um, the reason for a standing double crochet is oftentimes we'll start off with just a chain stitch and it'll, you know, you'll chain stitch up and then you'll double crochet in the same one and you count that chain stitch as a double crochet, but it doesn't look the same as a double crochet and she wants this to be uniform all the way around so you can't tell where you start and where you stop. So um, standing double crochet is what we're gonna do and basically all you do for that is you kind of pretend like you already did the chain stitch and you're gonna wrap it just like you're gonna wrap, <laughs> let's see if I can get my hands straight on this. So you're gonna wrap it just as if you were gonna wrap a double crochet. Wrap it once, pick any row, Just, um, but you just wanna do like the beginning of where you have two stitches together, you wanna do the beginning of one of those. Um, and then pull it through, and then that is a single. So let's do this again, hold on. See, it's not something I do very often either. Okay, 
So go through, pull it through, pull through two, and then we're going to pretend like this one is the other one, pull through those two. Now hold on to it. You're going to do another double crochet into the same stitch. Just like that. Yay, you did it. So now this one's a lot more secure, so you can kind of let go of it. And then we're going to chain. Make sure the little tail stays back there. And then you're going to chain two, one, two, skip one. You're going to do two double crochets into this stitch. Chain two again, skip one, and do two double crochets into that stitch all the way around. I, I just count as I go and make sure that I'm getting it right. So like I have, I know I have one, two, three, four, five stitches left. I need to get two more sets of these in there. So I just kind of go, okay, I'm skipping one, I'm putting two in that, I'm skipping one, I'm putting two in that, I'm skipping one. So it's gonna work out perfectly. Um, if it doesn't work out perfectly, then I missed something somewhere. And then I go back. Chain two, and I believe we're just going to slip stitch into the top of this, and then we're going to weave in our ends. Single crochets. Now I'm going to move away from that lump right there just because I feel like it'll be cleaner if we start over here. We're going to do a standing single crochet in the first DC double crochet of a two, cro two double crochet group. So standing single crochet, you loop it once, go through the back loop, that's what the thing tells us to do. We're going to do back loops all the way around. And then do one single crochet. Hold onto this yarn because it's not really attached to anything and it won't be secure until you do the next one. So go and do the next single crochet in the back loop like that. Now you can let go of that. That's going to be fine just the way it is. Okay, so see what's happening because we're going in the back loop that's making this cool little ridge right here on the front loops. We want to continue that. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do three double crochets into this single crochet down here. In order to do that, we're going to move this back kind of out of the way because we're just going to work with this stitch. So you're going to wrap it like you would a, a double crochet, go through this stitch right here, pretend like that white one is not even there, and go ahead and we're going through both loops on this one. Go ahead and do one double crochet and then two more. Okay, and then this is going to basically lay on top of this little pinwheel here. So we've got these two are kind of behind, these ones are on top. Then we're going to do in the back loop, we're going to do single or single crochet on both of these. If I can get a hold of the yarn. Okay, and then 3 DCs into that single crochet right there that we skipped. So move your white ones out of the way. Okay, then bring the white ones back up and then in the back loop, single crochet on these ones. And you're going to do that all the way around until we get to the other side. 
This one is where the knot is, so it looks a little funky, but you can kind of see like the top of this one. You're going in the back of the top of that one. And then you're gonna go into the back of the top of this one. And you just kind of have to pretend like that knot isn't there. You still have that ridge. Oops, I'll probably have to trim that a little bit back. Okay, last one. Almost done. This is, I think this is the hardest part to me. Once you've got this figured out, the rest of it is pretty easy. The popcorn stitch will be something new for you, but the rest of it's pretty easy. So move these, go into this. You've already done the back loop on those. She wants me to slip stitch into this. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah, that looks pretty good, huh? Nice continuous line across there. Let's do what she says. Weird, you'd think that would like mess up our numbers. But we can always fix it if it does. Okay, so that's what she said is she wants you to slip stitch into the top of the first DC, not into the top of the first single crochet, which I find kind of strange, but we will go with it. Because I think on mine, you can kind of tell where I stop and start right there. And I think with hers, it's a cleaner line. So let's try and do it that way. She seems like she knows more about what she's doing than I do. So on to the next picture, which is this way. Okay. We'll start wherever I'm going to start right next to these guys just so that I can weave in the ends as I go we're going to go to the back loop put these guys kind of along the edge there and then we're going to oh we have to do a standing HTC sorry so pretend like you're doing a standing double you're going to wrap it twice go into the back loop pull up a loop and then you're just go through all three of these and it's gonna feel super weird because that last one is just a twirl on your thing. There you go. Now hold on to this yarn. It's not secure yet until you do the next stitch. So go ahead and do the next one. Make sure that the, your little tails that you're weaving in are in between. Just like that. And you're going to do that all the way around and you want it to be in the back loop so that you have this cool little ridge in the front. Okay, so what I love about this one is that she tells us exactly how many stitches we're supposed to be ending off with. And that is helpful because I'm, I feel like we skipped a stitch we shouldn't have skipped when we did that last thing. So let's just make sure that we are on the same page with her. She says we should have 40 HDCs. I'm not gonna count this. Well, the slip stitch counts as the last one. So let's do one, two, three, four, five, five, three, six, three, seven, thirty-eight. Oh my gosh. So I'm missing two and that's probably because I did that HDC or that join and I skipped those two stitches, but I do like that it's cleaner right there. So I'm going to go ahead and do um, my other two, my other HDC right here in the same stitch that I just did the last one in. And then I'm going to join and that join will actually make it um, be the last stitch. So that'll give us 40 like that. Ta -da. There we go. Okay, on to the next row. In first stitch made in round five, make a standing single crochet and single crochet in each stitch around. 
and then just um, join with a slip stitch. So that's super easy. They still want us to work in the back loops, so that's what we're gonna do. I have, I would literally usually wait until he's done doing our yard, but um, I have so much to cover tonight that I'm just like, hopefully you guys can just handle the fact that there is a lot of lawn mowing going on out there. So we're gonna do a single crochet in that stitch, and then we'll do the back loop of this stitch. Holding onto that tail, and then now you can let that go because it's a little bit more secure now that you have two stitches in there, and then just go all the way around in the back loop only, single crochet. Super easy. This should make you feel like you're flying. <laughs> I'm gonna turn the volume down. <laughs> Sorry, that's so loud. I always marvel at people who um, come up with the patterns for these Mand Mandela circles because they're um, just the math that goes into making it work is amazing. Cause like, even now I'm sitting here doing this thinking, did she do that right? Cause that's usually you add a stitch and whatever. I'm just going to do what she tells me to do. It worked out fine on that one. So I'm just going to trust and keep going. But it always, the, to be the person who actually comes up with the pattern always um, seems like such a marvel when it's a little bit more complicated like this is. Let's double check our stitched count. We have 40 again. Oh, I did do 40. Okay, so we're not gonna go into this one. We're gonna go into this one right here and that'll give us 40, which is good because that first one seems like a little floppy to me. So there we go, just like that. And then she says, go ahead and cut your yarn and weave in the ends like we have been. And we're gonna do a whole, we're gonna do popcorn stitches now. This will be fun. First, let's talk about the popcorn. Well, let's actually get our standing single crochet in there. And it looks like we're not working in back loops anymore. So no more worry about that. I say pick wherever you wanna start. Um, I kinda want my popcorn stitch to be over the top of these three. So I'm gonna start right here. Right, because it's gonna go pop, single crochet, popcorn stitch, single crochet, skip. Yeah, so I'm gonna start right here. Oops. With a standing single, like that. Okay, so the idea behind a popcorn stitch is you want to make really tall stitches and then squish them down. So we're just doing single crochets on the top to kind of secure them, but we're gonna do tall stitches um, to uh, make them look puffy like that. And it looks like what I did, it looks like those are triple crochets. So I think I'm gonna start with that. You can actually decide how, you can do quadruple, you can do extended triple. There's lots of different things you could do to make those puffy if you wanna make them really puffy. But I think those, I think those are triples. So. And she didn't explain to me, so I just kind of went with it, what I thought was gonna look good, and it turned out okay, so that's what I think I'm gonna go to. So let's do three triple crochets into the stitch. Oops, hold on, she wants me to do a chain first. So actually what we're gonna do is we're gonna do three triple crochets, but we're gonna do them together. So you'll see, this is what people do when they're doing a, um, when they're doing a decrease. To do a decrease on something, you'll like do single crochet, but you won't actually complete it single crochet and then you pull all of those together and that basically decreases it and makes it smaller. We're basically going to do that but we're going to build it first. So we're going to build three triple crochets and then cinch them together on top. So we're going to do um, pretend like you're doing a triple crochet. I mean you are doing triple crochets but you're going to just not finish it. So one, two, leave that loop on there. One, two, leave that loop on there. And then one, two, now you have all of those loops and you're gonna use one chain to pull it all together. So that's your first chain and your second chain to just kind of, you know how we did that to kind of go up. And then the next stitch, we're gonna do a single crochet. 
So what that does is it takes all that puffy stuff that you just made and cinches it down so it sticks out like a little popcorn. And then I believe we chain four. Here, let's double check. Yep, chain four, and then we're gonna skip two single crochets. One, two, three, four. Skip those two. And then we're gonna single crochet into this stitch. Chain one, and then popcorn stitch. So remember, we're gonna do triples, three of them. Don't finish it, just let it sit there for a second. And one more. And then we're gonna do a chain to bring them all together, like that. And one more chain, and then single crochet on the other side, right there, and that cinches it down and makes the actual puff, just like that. And you're gonna continue that all the way around with another chain four, skip two, all the way around until you're gonna chain four over here and connect it together. And see how they're lining up with these? That's what you want them to do so that they're like the pinwheel, the popcorn stitch is above the gray three together on there. So close. That's what it should look like so far. We have one more popcorn to do and then we're gonna connect it. Three, four chains. And I believe it's gonna connect right into the single crochet right here the very beginning. Just like that. Ta-da! Okay, weave in your ends. And we will do our final row. Okay, so we're gonna start off with a standing single crochet at the top of this. So basically what it is, is it's, it's the one that pulled, this is the single crochet that pulled it all together. We are going to grab the very tippy top of it. Okay, so that is the top of your popcorn stitch. Not where the actual single, where the actual chain stitch is, but the one that pulled it all together. So the very tippy top of that is where you want to be. And we're gonna do a single crochet, a standing single crochet in that. So wrap once, go right into that top part, single crochet. And then it says to skip the chain stitch. I kind of mentally skip that chain stitch anyway, which is right there, because it's basically just the coming back down the hill. And we're gonna do four DCs in this hole right here. So not in the chain, but in the hole that was made by the chain. So four here. And so what we're making are these points. So I believe there's gonna be two chain stitches right there. Let's make sure though. So we're gonna do, we did our four DCs, we're gonna do two chain stitches. That's basically the top of the hill and then starting to come back down the other side of the hill. And then four double crochets or DCs. just like that. And then it wants us to skip the single crochet and this chain and do a single crochet in the top of this. So we're gonna do a single crochet right there. Skip the chain and the single crochet and just go straight into this. Do four double crochets. One, two, 
three. Four, chain one, chain two, and then do four more. And that's what it looks like. See that coming together? We're gonna do that all the way around and then we're gonna join it right there and then we'll be done. I'm actually really looking forward to using these <laughs> as coasters. So um, a lot of people don't use coasters and so I always talk about making them and it seems silly to some people because they're, you know, just don't live in a coaster life. But I grew up in a house full of antiques. My dad was always refinishing antiques. And so um, there was always wood, like nice wood that you'd never want to put a water ring on. Otherwise, uh, the parents get angry. So there were coasters all over our house. So I've always grown up that way. And I, too, have quite a few antiques in my house um, just because... I, you know, you kind of become your parents as you get older. And I actually love having nice old, old pieces of furniture around. And you, again, you know, if you place a cup or something on it and it gets a water ring, it can cause, you know, damage. So I love having pretty coasters. So I'm actually looking forward to this. I know you guys are looking at doing these as appliques, um, but I'm actually not going to do that. I'm going to use them as coasters. They are the perfect size for a cup, like three inches apart on the circle. So um, it works for me. So I'm so close to being done. And I'll show you too. I think I'm, I was going to post it in our um, page, but um, those, remember the angry duck that my daughter loved? I actually did make those into coasters for her and I did the, used the heart appliques too. And I gave them to her. Um, well, they were meant to be given to her on her birthday, but we were so busy doing other birthday stuff that I forgot and I gave them to her yesterday. So now I can share them with you, but they turned out really cute. I made a second angry duck, but it was a happier duck. So now she has an, a happy duck and an angry duck and two hearts. Last set. It's always so exciting when you get to the end. <laughs> I love the journey, the in-between journey, but it's always fun when you get done with the project too. Okay, and then we're going to join these together, the top of that single crochet that we started with, just like that. I'm gonna knot it just to make sure that it's nice and secure. And there we go, we got our two sunburst mandala circles. And we'll just weave those ends in. And you're all done. And I got two coasters, yay! So if you wanted to do this just to make coasters, if they're too big for what you wanted to do on your blanket as um, appliques and you just wanted to make them as coasters, I highly recommend it. And you will feel super, super accomplished when you get them done because those are some pretty advanced stitches. So you got to the end of this and you did it all. Congratulations. And if you're looking at it going, I'm just not even sure I want to try it. There's nothing wrong with trying it. I mean, if you get to the point where you're too super frustrated and you want to take it apart, that's fine. Maybe come back to it when you feel a little bit more skilled. But um, right now, you will get here. This is this will be a great place for you to focus on getting here eventually. And I'm actually going to post the link to all of them because there are tons of cute little mandala circle flowers in there that you can use on anything. And if you can, I think this one is probably one of the most complicated. If you can do this one, you can do any of those other ones that she has. So I'll post the link to that. It's a little hard to figure out. I'll try and make the, sometimes when you post things on Pinterest, it's a link to a link to another link, and then you're finally on the page. It's kind of frustrating. So I'll get you to the final page so you're, you don't get frustrated with that. And um, yeah, and then just go through and check them all out. I think I only saw January, February, March listed on there. I assume that there's more, so um, we'll see. But I think, you know, I mean, that what is that 90 different circles to work with? That's quite a bit. So um, anyway, 
congratulations on getting here. We'll go on to the next, I think our next um, one will be me teaching how to sew an applique on to a square. So tune in for that. Hopefully we'll get both of those up tonight.